Hey there! Is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible, because it's the divinely inspired Word of God, and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope that you'll see that we're welcoming and spiritually passionate, and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical, relevant messages to equip and to encourage you through life's ups and downs. At Lifehouse Church, we want you to know that we care about this community, and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are, where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today, and we hope that you'll join us on our journey following Christ and living out His plan for us. So Lifehouse Church welcomes you. A very good morning to all of you beautiful people out there. I would like to just welcome you back to one of our Lifehouse Church online campus meetings here today. And um, as you all might know, this year's theme is Relay. And we all are running in, in a race where God has called us to make a difference together as the broader body. However, we also realize that there's seasons that we go through in life. And I think where we find ourselves at the moment, kind of like in this second month of this year some of us might be really overwhelmed and challenged on various levels and go like I don't even know if I can still do this so today I really want to just encourage you with a word around um, the theme that I've given today is don't let go of your baton no matter what guys don't let go of your baton there's a purpose and a calling that God has got over your life and I want to encourage you don't let go of what God has put inside of your hands but before we get to that I want to just ask you if we can just bow our heads in prayer. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for another awesome, awesome day that you've given us, Lord. Thank you for your word that liberates us and sets us free. And I pray for every person watching right now, Lord God, that they will find and encounter your goodness and your grace over their lives today. And that your word, Lord, will wash away all of the heaviness that so easily comes and sits on our shoulders. And I pray for freedom in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. So yeah, I just want to um, kick off today with, I'm going to be using two scriptures. So if you have your Bibles with you, I really want to encourage you to go to the book of Proverbs. And we're going to be reading out of Proverbs chapter 4. And then also in the New Testament, we're going to be spending some time in Ephesians chapter 6. So if you can do that, get your Bibles out and turn so long to Proverbs 4 and as well as to Ephesians um, chapter 6. You know, with, with the increase of pressure that we face um, in, in times like these, 
um, there also is an increase of attack. And I think that's something that we really have to pay attention to. That when we are under pressure, we often, often the enemy sees that as an opportunity to really attack and to, can I say, really bring harm and damage to a person's life. And that's often where we in encounter and experience, uh, experience higher levels of hopelessness, anxiety, fear. Um, some of you might even be going through really deep, challenging times of depression. And ultimately, we find ourselves, if we go through those things, that we seek comfort and the biggest problem is that we end up trying to look for false comforts. Well, we don't look for false comforts, but we find comfort in things that are false, that are not good, that are not the truth. That is not what God really put out there for us to find comfort in. Um, and the problem, however, is not these elements, namely hopelessness, anxiety, fear, depression, or false comforts. The problem is um, how, when we allow these things to take up residency in our lives. You see, for many of us, we think, oh, those are just feelings that I go through. I go through feelings and emotions of hopelessness, anxiety or fear. My precious friend, I need you to understand that those feelings are connected to a door in your heart. And if you're not careful and you leave that door open, that's where the enemy comes in. And that's when that thing takes absolute residency in your heart. That's when hopelessness thinks it has a mandate. Anxiety thinks it has a mandate. Fear, depression, uh, false comforts think they have mandates in your life. And, and that's horrible because that's when we get trapped. And that's often where we feel so overwhelmed that we just can't deal with this thing anymore. And um, I want to just read you a, a powerful, powerful scripture in Proverbs 4. And we're going to read from verse 20. Very, very amazing, amazing scripture. So just listen nicely. He says this, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Don't let them depart from your eyes. He's speaking about the word of truth, right? He says, keep them in the midst of your heart. Hmm. For they are life to those who find them. All right. And health to all their flesh. What is being attacked right now is the health of your soul and your flesh. And that's, where, that's when the next scripture comes in that we know so well. He says, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it springs the wellspring of life. Put away from you all deceit, deceitful speaking um, and perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look upright before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Remove your foot from evil. So we see that, that Proverbs 4 says to us, Guard your heart. Guard your heart. And the question I, I sit with, you know, I... I often preach about that and I just realize that maybe people are really struggling to guard their hearts, you know. Do we really guard our hearts? We find ourselves overwhelmed by hopelessness, anxieties, fear, depression, and all of these things. And we try to find remedies to fix it. And, and, and we turn to the Word of God and the Word of God says, guard your heart. The question is, do we? And, and the second qu that question leads me to, how do we guard our hearts? How do we protect ourselves? From these emotions that ultimately could lead to a stronghold of the enemy. And um, I think it's important that we first realize the power that these enemies have in our lives, the power that the enemy has when, when we do leave the doors open too long. Number one is this, that they blind us for the truth. And guys, when you open the word, you're just not going to see it anymore. You're going to look at truth and you're going to question truth. So it blinds you from the truth, it steals your joy. It steals your peace. The very thing that Jesus came to give us, that is what these things steal from us. It cripples you from moving forward and pursuing love. So you just become so stagnant in, in your way of life and you kind of make peace with the trouble that you're in and you think, well, I guess this is the way of life. And the Lord is saying, no, it is not. What they ultimately do is it tortures your soul and it replaces the truth with God. And I believe that God really wants you and me to be free from this. We do not want that situation around our lives because if we allow that to happen, guys, remember we're running a race. But if we allow these things to set, please listen to me. It's not long. You find yourself just running in circles, running in circles. And then you're no longer running the race that you set 
no longer passing the baton of life or the baton of hope to people. You know what you are passing on to people rather? This is the scary part, guys. You rather end up passing criticism, judgment, and talk. That's what Proverbs Proverbs 4 is speaking of. He said, get those perverse lips away from you, the deceitful mouth, get that away from you. You have to guard your heart in order to do that. And your heart's not guarded. Your mouth is full of deceit. Your mouth is full of corruption. And I'm not saying that so sad because we don't have to live that way. God really made us to live free. He made us to run this race in freedom. Although it's not an easy race, it's definitely a doable race. But if allow these things to happen, it's going to just pull you in. Just run in circles. And the problem is, it's going to come out of your mouth. Yes, yeah, the scariest part of it all. You still think that you're right. That's probably the highlight because remember I said to you that one of, the re one of these symptoms of, of this, oh, let's call it a disease, these things that not the truth, replaces the truth with lies. And so ultimately you think to yourself, I'm okay. I'm good. In the, in the space that I am, the way that I'm thinking, it's actually right. You will never know if you don't come and measure it up to the presence of God, to the Spirit of God, to the Word of God. And, and I want to say to you that that is a crucial Crucial, crucial element. Um, how do we stand? How do we guard our hearts? How do we hold on to the baton with everything that's inside of us and we don't let go? And that's and Paul kind of show, Paul shows us exactly how to do that in the book of Ephesians. So if if you are there already, you're one ahead of me. I'm on my way there. Ephesians chapter six. All right, I'm one page away. There we go. Ephesians chapter 6, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to read um, from verse 10. Now, this is basically at the end of the letter where Paul writes to the church of Ephesus. And I love it because he emphasizes some strong keys for us here right at the end of his letter, kind of like reassuring the church that these are crucial elements. And he says in Ephesians 6 verse 10, listen nicely, I'm just going to read the first, first three verses there. He says, verse 10, Brethren, be strong in the Lord. Hang on a second. Let's pause. We're going to do this nice and slowly. Be strong in the Lord. Well, we're in 2021, Lord. Is it okay if I'm strong in you on a Sunday? But from Monday to Saturday, you know, if I can just rely on my things, my way, my God. God says, no, listen nicely. Paul says, listen, very good. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Not the power of His might or the power of the sin that is entangling you. He says, no, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. He goes on to say, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. Here we go. That you will be able to stand. I'm paraphrasing that you'll be able to run the race and stand against the vials of the devil. And I, yes, the key, and this is what I really want to encourage you with. Today. He says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Precious friends, please pay attention to this. May the Spirit of God speak deep inside of your heart today. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness, in the heavenly places for that reason take up the whole armor of god that you may be able to withstand you in the beginning stand now he says that you may be withstand in the evil day and having done everything to stand now god in our life we have not done everything to stand and that also leads us to a place of absolute weakness where the enemy can just come pummel you push you over and can I honestly say, keep you captive under hopelessness, anxiety, fear, depression, and false prophets. And God says, no, I've called my people to stand, to withstand the vials of the devil, and to run the race that I have set before them. Now, I really want to just say this to you. We are sadly in a generation where we want everything sorted out so quickly and so easily. We love it when there's just a one small little thing that we need to do. But the more I grow in my walk with God, the more I deal with people, the more I realize that God's 
kingdom. And, and I see a sentence here that in the kingdom of God, the solution to sustained freedom, to I said there, the solution to sustained freedom and victory is often found in, as the word, process. Process. And I'm so aware that in God's kingdom, there are processes that we need to abide by, that we need to follow, that we need to live in, to see, and not just see, but actually maintain the freedom that God has given us. And I actually have an awesome scripture, this week, which is just a certain sentence that pops up in my head, it's a statement to me. Jesus says in Matthew 11, 20, and Jesus will come to you, all right, all of you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I'll give you a And we love that scripture. He has to be thinking for I believe of that scripture. He says in verse 29, take my yoke upon you. Once again, we can get back to Ephesians. He says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. He says, take my yoke upon you. Then he says these next words, which tells me it's more than just, hmm, go and make disciples. A one minor solution. It is really a process. So Jesus ends up saying, let me teach you. Jesus says, let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Here Jesus saying, let me teach you. And that tells me that this step oh, I'm not going to figure out on my own. I'm only going to figure out when I'm sitting at the foot of the cross, when I'm really vulnerable, when I'm teachable, when I'm humble, and I'm saying, Lord, speak to me. So Jesus comes and he says this. He says, let me teach you. And so, we've now read in, in Ephesians 6, he says there, this is the final writings in the letter to the church of Ephesus. He says, be strong in the Lord. He says, put on the full armor of God. Um, he says, because your, your fight is not against the flesh. Your fight, and for too many of us, for too many of us, we're running around in circles, around situations with people, family members, work, um, the government, we have, we have, can I say that we are projecting all our problems to, away from us and not realizing or to these people and situations and things and not realizing that the genuine cause is as far as we especially if you're Christian, especially if you're Christian, I need you to recognize this, that the fight that you're fighting for peace, for joy, a full life, a happy marriage, is not a fleshly battle. You see, I can buy my wife flowers. But I need victory in the spirit for us to have unity. Flowers doesn't bring unity in America. And so many people have tried that. We've bought things and done things and that doesn't do anything. We need to get it right in the spirit. Jesus says, I will teach you. And I think that the solution here today uh, for you and me not to let go of the battle, no matter what, no matter how hard it is, is found in the next four verses in Ephesians 6. And I'm going to read it to you. And then I'm going to be closing off um, for you today. He says this in verse 14. He says, stand. Stand. Okay. Yes, Lord. Stand. And um, having girded your way with the truth. Now, I'm going to highlight a couple of words after this, but let me just read it through. He says, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all of that, Take up the shield of faith with which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. All right. And take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And many times we stop there, but we need to continue reading. He says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. All right. Being watchful to the end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Now, I want to just end there uh, for practical purposes. And I want to just encourage you. Now, there's a couple of words that is out of punishment. And the Lord just says to me, this is one of the greatest keys for my people today to break through the strongholds of the devil, including hopelessness, anxiety, fear, depression, and false comforts is if they will implement verse 14 to 18 of Ephesians chapter 6. And I'm going to highlight those words and I'm just going to punch them out there. I'm going to push it out to you. And I want to say to you that your Christianity 
is crucial. Your walk with God is crucial. I want to say your life depends on you implementing the processes of God in your life. All right? So here we go. He says this. Put around your way truth. Guys, like I said to you, part of the plan is the enemy. He is the, Bible says he's the father of lies. What he comes and does is he twists all truth and might be seen true or partially true. All right, but it's actually a lie. And what it does is design to separate you and me from God, to make you and me kind of standing one side, either questioning the integrity of God's word, or secondly, thinking that we have the ability to do it in our own strength. Thank you. That is right. So he says, the first key I want you to do is I want you to gird yourself. What is that? It's like a belt, right? You put, you put a belt on your pants if you have to run down the road, your pants not going to fall down. You can trip and fall and look like a good. Okay. So he says, put good, and I believe, gird yourself with truth. And here's the deal, guys. What is truth? In our current day and age, there's almost nothing we can trust. We can look at social media, we can follow people, we can watch videos and blogs and all sorts of stuff. But I want to say, it, it's, it's so uncertain that, that I think we, we have to have to now more than ever hold on to what is the absolute truth. And that is the Word of God. And, and no doubt you need to stick to the Word. The next, sec next second word is he uses the word righteousness. Now, we know that the breastplate of righteousness kind of like the kids, the heart area. But what is righteousness? That means I'm, I'm walking, I'm walking the walk of God's kingdom. I'm walking the walk as a follower of Christ. I'm walking and speaking like Jesus does. I'm going where Jesus goes. I'm acting like Jesus acts. That righteousness, meaning I'm right. Standing with God. Now I can only come into right standing with God when I have truth as a foundation in my life, which then leads me into a place where I'm walking in righteousness, which then leads to the next point, which he says is this. He says, um, shod your feet for the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now we all long for peace, guys. We all long for peace. And then he comes. In the night you steal your peace. And that's found in the gospel. Please let me make a little joke here. Peace is found in the gospel, not in gossip. <laughs> and I'm sure people are smiling right now. But guys, please do not lend your ears out to all the nonsense that are being spoken out there. And be careful. Your own mouth. What's coming out there? If you want peace, it is found in the gospel. And then he goes on to say, and I love this, right? This is for me incredible. He says, above all, take up the shield of faith. Now, faith is a shield against the, the fiery darts of the enemy. Now, let's just use an opposition. One of the greatest opposition to faith is fear. So, I want to say to you that if you're not a Christ follower and you don't deal in faith, you will be led by fear and you will be confronted by fear a lot. It will be a huge stronghold in your life. It will be a huge challenge that you face. It doesn't have to be. If you surrender your life to Christ and you pick up the shield of faith, what does that mean? When I'm encountering moments of fear, I choose to act out of faith. I don't see the outcome. I don't know exactly if there even is a bridge at the end of this cliff right now in the darkness. I I'm about to embrace fear, which is going to want to make me grab onto a rock or something. Yeah, but I'm going to choose faith because faith pleases God. Our works is dead, so I'm going to take a step by faith, knowing that I'm led by the Word, walking righteously, and I have the peace of the gospel within me. I'm not led by the Word, therefore I can walk by faith. Then he goes on to say, "Is put on the helmet." Of salvation, what does that mean, guys? I want to say this to you: that um, we are led by what comes into our mind. We are led every day. Deep, open the fridge. Hmm. Right here. Open the fridge. Okay. What's in the fridge? There is water or coke. What? Is that? Oh, coke. Ooh. But here's the deal, guys. And I know that's quite a silly example, but. It's important that we understand that 
He speaks about the helmet of salvation, which when I, when I just open that up a little bit, it's the path of holiness and purity. My precious friends, please do not be content with where you are right now, no matter how long you're saved, no matter where you are in your Christianity, please do not be content. You know why the book of Philippians says this? He says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. That tells me that even my salvation is a process and there's things in my salvation that I need to constantly work on. So what am I saying to you? That you will be posed with, with decisions like open the fridge, get coke as water. You will be constantly on a daily basis. You will be confronted with questions like that in your walk with God. Truth or a lie? Sin or faith? You, you're going to choose hatred or peace, anger or love. You're going to choose. You're going to come to this crossroads every single day. And that's why we need to pursue the path of purity and holiness, which is connected to salvation. I'm almost done. He then goes on to say this. He says, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word. I love it because what he has done here now, he's actually He says, stand, gird your waist with truth. And we know that the truth is in the Word of God. He goes at the end of this all and he says, take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So he's sandwiching it all together, right? In the Word. He's putting it all together. That's the cement of it all. I want to say that we have to trust what the Word of God says. The enemy is working tirelessly to make you and me doubt what this book says. He's working tirelessly to keep you and me away from this book. He's working tirelessly in getting you to rather listen to people's input rather than God's input for your life. And we really need to make the word central to our lives today. And I really want to encourage you if you want breakthrough in these areas hopelessness, anxiety, fear, depression, false comfort, and you want to stand and you actually want to run this race and you don't want to drop the bat and every now and then find yourself running and you're tired and you look at your hand you're like there's nothing left in my hand I, you're coming to hand something over to someone you realize oh, I, don't know. I dropped this back there and God says no I don't want you to drop this back there I'm helping you right but what I really love is that that's not the end because there's one verse where he goes on and he says and I believe that this for me personally keeps the connection between you and God very close. Very, very close. Because he goes on to say, after giving that whole list, he says, praying always. Now, I know that when I pray, it creates a way of communication between me and the Father. And one of the keys of prayer is not just me saying words to heaven, but actually giving space that God can have a conversation back with me. So he says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Now, okay, there's a conversation for another day, but let me just say that there's a space where you need to draw from your spirit, not just, Lord, thank you for my breakfast and Tani Sunny and help us through the day. No, oh, there's supplication. Now, what does supplication mean? I mean, supplication, if you go and Google it, you can go and research it as well. It speaks of a deep, desperate cry and a begging, passionate begging for help, all right? And so... He says the supplication in the spirit. Now I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you out there. If you're filled with the spirit, start praying in the spirit. If you can pray in tongues, pray in tongues. If you can't pray in tongues, ask God to give you a tongue. But stop praying in the spirit. Stop desiring the gifts of the spirit. The Bible says. But anyway, he goes on to saying, praying um, with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And he uses a very powerful word. Be watchful, God. Please do not walk mindlessly through your life. It says, be watchful um, to this end with all perseverance. And here he uses the word again. Supplication for all things. Because that speaks exactly into this whole theme of our year. That we are running a relay, not just an individual race, but a team race here. And he says, I want you not just to pray for the saints. You know, right, right, for the church my brothers in Christ. No, he says, have supplication. What does it mean? Passionate prayer. I'm watchful. I'm praying for those that the Lord lays on my heart. When I do that, 
guess what happened? Guess what happened? We stopped praying for the saints. We stopped genuinely interceding. You're on your knees more than five minutes in the morning. Not just quiet time, you're in space, just crying out to God. Pay close attention to what happens. All of a sudden, your focus is not on your own hopelessness, anxiety, fear, depression, false comfort. All of a sudden, God starts shifting, he starts cracking the walls that the enemy has built around you. He comes through his spirit, and only he can do it. And he comes and he breaks those things, and you start seeing through it, and you start seeing hope. And you start praying into that place of hope for many people out there. And I believe that that's what God wants to do for you and for me. My friend, God wants you and me to be in a place of victory. And I want to encourage you today with that. And I want to leave you with a prayer today that the Lord will touch your heart. If you're struggling with any one of these things, hopelessness, anxiety, fear, depression, and false comfort, I want to ask you to just lay them before the cross right now. And I'm just going to pray a prayer over you and may your heart be set on fire for the kingdom of God again like never before may you not be led by the spirit of fear and fear is one of the biggest things that the enemy has used in these last two years we've got people to condition their lives around fear not around the spirit it's sad but I think God wants to set free so let me pray Father in the name of Jesus I pray for every person whatever they hold their hands before you Lord whether it's hopelessness whether it's anxiety Fear, depression or false comforts Lord things that we've adopted in our lives that we just live by daily thinking that it makes us but oh how false that is oh how short lived that satisfaction is Lord the truth is found in you true freedom is found in you and I pray Spirit of God would you touch every person in Jesus name pray that you'll set them free right now in the mighty name of Jesus come Spirit of God and I pray that hope will be re injected into their hearts right now father i pray that we will implement lord god what your word says in proverbs 4 and in ephesians 6 i pray that we'll implement the verses from verse 14 through all the way through to 18 help us lord to identify those key words that we love them out. i pray lord for every person watching right now that their hearts will be stirred to action not just oh this is a great video but that they will be stirred to action to make a difference in their lives and the people's lives around them. I bless every person right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. God bless you. If you're in the East London area, I want to just invite you to please join us at our live campus. We're currently at Community Farm Hall. We have church at 9 a.m. And if you would like to invest into our online campus, because we really believe that it's crucial. Uh, we would like to um, acquire certain gear and elements, put ele some elements in place so that we can actually live stream our services to you. And if you want to do that, I want to ask you to please uh, contribute to find the banking details um, in the beginning of this video, in the introduction, and then if you can just put a reference there, live speaker to you. Doesn't matter if it's 100 rand, 200 rand. 10, 20. We currently need for the beginning of our project, we need around 50,000, uh, which is really not a lot, but we're striving towards that and trusting so that we can really get a good product out there. Um, so if you want to invest in this, um, your finances will be used to advance the kingdom of God and spread the message of God. So if you do that, guys, please make a reference to live. 22. Live 22 and that money will go right there. Lord, you have an awesome, awesome week. Hope to see you soon.